Hi everyone, welcome to today's session. Today I would want us to look at uh, advanced financial reporting, paper CA32, which was done last semester, December 2021. Question number one, which was all about group, group accounts. Question number one, group accounts. Generally last semester was uh, quite an easy paper, quite an easy paper. I even get so much concerned why we get uh, so many people really failing in some of these papers. You should not fail in AFR, never. So we are able to see my screen. The first requirement here is goodwill arising on acquisition of the investment in subsidiaries. B, gain or loss arising on disposal of the investment in DAFU Limited as reported in the individual financial statements of Pareto Limited. Number two, the consolidated statement of profit or loss. C, consolidated statement of financial position as of 30th June, 2021. So please take a, a snapshot of this question. Of course, you must be having it somewhere. You must be having it somewhere, but it's important if you don't have it, take a photo of the question paper take a photo of the question paper. I'm trying to balance it in a way that it fits. Yes, like that. It's about Pareto Limited. Pareto Limited, and for this video, I will be able to do the first question, the one of uh, computing goodwill arising on acquisition of the investment in the subsidiaries. Great. So we are told here Pareto Limited is the holding or parent company of a listed group of companies with its year ended 30th June, 2021. I have to underscore this. Pareto Limited has made a number of acquisitions and a disposal of an investment. So it has made some acquisitions and a disposal of an investment. The following summarized draft statements of financial position relate to the group of companies for the year ended 30th June, 2021. So this 30th June, 2021 is the date of financial statements. So we can see the statement of financial position of Pareto Limited, S of SOFP of Pamba Limited, SOFP is statement of financial position of Pamba Limited and of Dafu Limited. So what are we told here? On 1st October, 2020, Pareto Limited acquired an 80% equity interest in Pamba Limited when its retained earnings stood at 3.5 billion Kenya shillings. The purchase consideration comprised 1250 million of Pareto Limited shares with a nominal value of one each and a market price of shilling 6.8 each. At acquisition of Pamba Limited, at acquisition of Pamba Limited, the only adjustment required to the identifiable net assets of Pamba Limited was for land, which had a carrying amount of shilling 625 million less than its fair value. Note two, the group policy is to measure the non controlling interest at fair value. At the date of acquisition of Pamba Limited, the non controlling interest had a fair value of shillings 21, 25 million. Note number three, Pareto Limited had acquired 100% equity interest in DAFU Limited a number of years ago when its retained earnings amounted to 1750 million. At acquisition, the fair values of identifiable net assets of DAFU Limited approximated their carrying values, meaning that we do not have any fair value adjustment. The purchase consideration comprised cash amounting to 5750 million. Note number four. Pareto Limited disposed of 60% of its investment in DAFU Limited on 1st April 2021 for shillings 4,700 million, when the fair value of the identifiable net assets of DAFU Limited was 6,250 million. The fair value of the remaining 40% equity interest was 4,300 million at disposal. Pareto Limited has not accounted for the disposal. Five, none of the companies had issued any shares since Pareto Limited acquired its shareholding in them. Six, neither the goodwill on acquisition of subsidiaries 
nor the investment in the associated associate had been impaired. So there is no impairment of goodwill. A, goodwill arising on acquisition of the investee in the subsidiaries. This is fairly a straightforward question, which I'll be able to get all the marks. Now, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, I can't just go straight away to computing goodwill just like that. Remember the basic processes. When you are solving a question on group accounts, especially when you want to get this kind of a item, stuff that has been asked here, which is goodwill, number one, you must give us the group structure. Number two, you must give us the net assets of the subsidiaries. Number three, you give us the goodwill. So first, I'm going to give you the group structure, which I would want us to draw together here. So I'm making reference to the question that we have here, which of course I know you must have taken a snapshot. So I would want to get the group structure right. If you don't get the group structure right, then automatically the entire question will be wrong for you, which will be very unfortunate because it's a straightforward thing. I should be able to get all the marks here. So you're told on first, I'm reading note number one. On 1st October 2020, Pareto Limited acquired an 80% equity interest in Pamba. So we have here Pareto. We have here Pareto acquired. 80% shareholding in a company called who? Pamba, in a company, company called Pamba, Pamba. All right, so when did the acquisition occur? The date of acquisition, the date of acquisition you are told here is 1st of October, 1st of October, 2020. How about the date of the financial statements? The date of the financial statements you can see up there, the financial statements are dated 30th June, 2021. 30th June, 2021. If they wanted me, ladies and gentlemen, to give them like a statement of uh, comprehensive incomes, then I would have counted the number of months very fast, especially for part one goodwill. I don't need the number of months that this subsidiary was ours in the, uh, in the financial year. No, that is irrelevant. But most importantly, is for us to recognize that Pamba is a serious investment to us. 80%. 80% signifies what your control. So the controlling interest, who is the parent? And the parent in this case here is Pareto. Who is the parent? Who is Pareto here? Controls 80%. And then now we have the NCI, non-controlling interest. The NCI, the NCI here will be having what percentage? 20%. So parent with Pareto will be having 80%, and then we have the NCI having 20%. Remember Pareto made other investments in the financial year. They also went ahead and bought some other company investments in some other made an investment in some other company called Dafu. And for Dafu, for Dafu, they bought 100% of Dafu. They bought 100% of Dafu, 100% of Dafu. So if you read the question very well, we are told that note number three, Pareto Limited had acquired 100% equity interest in Dafu Limited a number of years ago, which is very good for me, a number of years ago, when its retained earnings amounted to 1750. So Dafu automatically is just like Pamba, Dafu is a subsidiary, All right? Although later on, they made what here? Some disposal. Later on, we are told here that they disposed. 60%, so that now on disposing 60%, DAFU jumped from a subsidiary status to an associate status. Because when they sell 60%, 100% minus 60%, that means that uh, DAFU shall only be having 40% of DAFU. 40%, remember, that automatically makes it what year? An associated company. So unless you're told otherwise, at 40%, that becomes an associated company. But for now, at the date of acquisition, DAFU is what here is a subsidiary, and 80% here Pamba is as a subsidiary because we are in control. Pareto is in control. So that is the end of step number one. That is the end of step number one. So from there, we go to step number two. Step number two, please go ahead and give us the net assets of the two subsidiaries. You can combine, but if I'm the one doing this, I'll come and compute the net assets of, uh, first of all, the net asset of Pamba. 
I'll have to do them separately, net assets of Pamba, the first subsidiary. So net assets of Pamba, I'll give them the net assets of Pamba at the date of acquisition and at reporting date. At the date of acquisition and at what year? At reporting and at reporting date. Remember when you talk of net assets, you're looking at the equity components. Equity components you begin with the share capital, the share capital of Pamba. The share capital of Pamba, what do we have? The share capital of Pamba. Go to the statement of financial position of Pamba Limited and look at the share capital. The share capital of Pamba, I can see the share capital of Pamba, share capital of Pamba was 2,500. So remember, rarely does this share capital fluctuate. The share capital in most cases for these subsidiaries will remain the same. That is at acquisition and at reporting. And that is why if you look at the notes given, if you look at the notes given, note number five, they have told you none of the companies had issued any shares since Pareto Limited acquired its shareholding in them. So meaning that uh, whatever shareholding you are seeing at reporting is the shareholding that was existing at what year? At acquisition. I'm trying to pick the equity component. So the next equity component is known as what year? Share premium. The share premium. The same thing. Very easy. So share premium for Pamba. This is for Pamba. The share premium for which one? For Pamba. The share premium for Pamba, I can see is a thousand. So I'll talk over a thousand, a thousand, no changes in between. The other component under net assets here will be known as what year? Retained earnings. Retained earnings, of course, I expect some changes. So retained earnings. So retained earnings, what do we have? Retained earnings, ladies and gentlemen, retained earnings, I can see at uh, the financial reporting date. At the financial reporting date, Pamba had a retained earnings, if you can see there, retained earnings of 52.50 at reporting, at the financial reporting date, 52.50. How about at acquisition? Retained earnings at acquisition, ladies and gentlemen, retained earnings, at, uh, these will be given in the note. You are told there in note number one that uh, on 1st of October 2020, Pareto Limited acquired an 80% equity interest in Pamba Limited when its retained earnings stood at 3,500 million. All these figures are in millions, so please come and put 3,500. Now, the last thing, ladies and gentlemen, is for you to come and consider the revaluations, which will go to the net assets here. The revaluations nowadays, we call them fair value adjustments. So we have the fair value adjustment. The fair value adjustment, fair value adjustment, they told us, Pamba, during revaluations, we had learned, we had learned, we had learned which, whose value was more, whose value was more, it was revalued upwards. We are told, and gentlemen, in note number two, simply, or rather, on this note, the last sentence before note two, before note two, at acquisition of Pamba Limited, the only adjustment required to the identifiable net assets of Pamba Limited was uh, for land, which had a carrying amount of shilling 625 million less than its fair value, meaning that fair value was more. Fair value was more. So remember, fair value adjustment, it is 625, 625. That does not change. The same. I would have provided for depreciation on the fair value adjustment. But now remember this thing that is being revalued here is land. Land is never depreciated. So then come and give us the totals. Please give us the totals there. Please give us the totals there. So what do we have? So I'll come and get my calculator. Talk of 2,500 plus 1,000 plus 3,500 plus 625, which gives me 76 what year? 76, which gives me 76, 25, 76, 25. How about net assets at reporting? So we have 2,500 there plus 1,000 there plus 5,250 plus 625, which will give me 93, which will give me 93.75. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to make my work easier because of what here? Yeah, because of the group retained earnings and because of the 
than controlling interest value, it will be very important for me to come and calculate what we call the PAP. To come and calculate what we call the PAP. PAP stands for post acquisition profit. Post acquisition profit. So the post acquisition profit, what do we have here? It will be net assets at reporting, which is 93.75 minus net assets at acquisition, which is 76.25. 76.25. So when I get this pop, pop is post acquisition profit. Post acquisition profit. So we have that 93.75 minus 76.25. What do we have here? I can see 17.50. I know this is uh, irrelevant for part one, but if I'm the one doing this, I'll go ahead and share the pop. Share the pop out for the subsequent parts share the pop out. So in this case here, we'll see in this case here, the parent. The parent is going to get what share. We know that the parent has 80%. So 80% of 1750. 80% of 1750, so times 0 0.8, which will give me 1400. So the parent here will take 1400 of this post acquisition profit. And then the balance will go to NCI. We know Pamba's NCI is 20%. So 20% of 1750, 20% of 1750. So we have 0.2 times 1750, which will end up giving us 20% times 1750, which will end up giving me 350. So NCI's value will be 350. I don't need, of course, these figures for solving part one, but for sure I will need them later. So let me just have them there. Let me have them there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would have gone to net assets straight away of DAFU, but because of my small board here, I would want to just compute the goodwill of Pamba. I finish with the goodwill of Pamba, and then I will go to DAFU so that it, that can give me a chance to rub whatever that I have here. So I would want to rub something small here, create some space here for goodwill computation. So come and give me the goodwill, the goodwill, the goodwill of the first subsidiary. Remember, we only compute goodwill of subsidiaries. So goodwill of Pamba, goodwill of Pamba. So goodwill of Pamba Limited. So I'll come and pick the purchase consideration. The purchase consideration, which was given out by the parent. For the parent to acquire 80%, how much if it's cash do they give? If it's shares that they gave, what is the value of those shares? So in this question, it was about Pamba or rather the parent having given out their shares to acquire the stake. We are told on first note number one, I'm reading note number one. On first October, 2020, Pareto Limited acquired an 80% equity interest in Pamba Limited when its retained earnings stood at 3,500. The purchase consideration comprised 1250 million of Pareto Limited shares, so Pareto gave their own shares, whose nominal value, that's irrelevant to me, whose nominal value was one, the market value was six, it's this market value that I want. So ladies and gentlemen, they gave out 1,250 shares and each share had a market value of 6.8. So then what was the purchase consideration? So then this will be 1250. This will be 1250 times 6.8, which will end up giving us 8,500. So the purchase consideration is 8,500 there. Remember, this is the consideration given by the parent to acquire 80%. They never bought 100% of Pamba. They only bought 80%, meaning that there is somebody who is holding to this 20%. And this person holding to this 20% is referred to as a non-controlling investor, a non-controlling interest. So in this case here, come and give us the NCI at acquisition. And remember this NCI at acquisition has to be taken at fair value, the shares that they hold, the shares that they held at acquisition had a fair value of how much, had a fair value of how much. We are told in note number two, the group's policy is to measure the non-controlling interest at fair value. At the date of acquisition of Pamba Limited, 
the NCI interest at a fair value of 21.25. So they had 21.25 this NCI. So please come and give me the total consideration. Please give me the total consideration. Add the two, give me the total consideration. So we have 8,500 plus 21.25, which will give us 10,625. Great. So then we'll come and compare these with what? We'll come and compare these with the net assets that were acquired. So come here and the less, come here and the less, the net assets, the net assets of the subsidiary at acquisition. The net assets of the subsidiary at acquisition. So net assets of the subsidiary, we have them here. Net assets of Pamba of the subsidiary at acquisition, they were 76. They were worth 76, 25, like that. So please go ahead and subtract. Whatever you get will be called goodwill at acquisition. So goodwill at acquisition, when you subtract what we have. So we have 10, 625 minus 76, 25, which will end up giving us goodwill at acquisition of 3,000. I'm not interested in any impairment uh, things simply because the examiner in part one wanted us to ascertain the goodwill at acquisition, goodwill of the investment at what year they wanted us to get goodwill arising on acquisition of the investment in the subsidiaries. So ladies and gentlemen, that is number one. Of course, you can see I've done quite a lot. It may be even worth much more than the four marks, right? But I know that uh, most of the workings that I have will come in handy in the subsequent parts, like when they want me to do this consolidation, right? C, C. But for now, please allow us to look at the second subsidiary. So the second subsidiary, the second subsidiary, what do we have? For the second subsidiary, what do we have? Or rather, instead of me doing this one for the second subsidiary, I would want you, my students, in this case here, to go ahead and compute for us the goodwill arising out of acquisition of DAFU. DAFU is our subsidiary. And then you post your answer on our WhatsApp. Let's see, we'll be the first one to bail the cut, to bail the cut. I would want to see whether there is anybody who will be able to compute for us the goodwill of acquiring DAFU. And the answer is supposed to be 1,000. 500. The answer is supposed to be 1,500. So I'm interested in your working. For the students who are following us online, this is a basically RCM online college. And you should be able to really join us, join us, join us, especially during this revision by giving us a, a call. And we shall be able to show you for sure that Zoom classes work magic. Right? right, that you don't need to go to anybody's physical class rooms, no. All the time that you shall be using for commuting here and there, you should be able to put that time into what year, into revision. Otherwise, it has been a pleasure hosting you today. I expect to receive your calls or your WhatsApp messages regarding our trainings through this number, 0719 525 000. Otherwise, Thank you for now. Bye.